So let's just go back. You're absolutely right that data is not new, right? So I mean, there's a bit of a of what we call digi babble here, you know, sort of the BS around what all this is actually about because data has always been used by this industry. Um, those of us who were lucky enough to have worked on P&G at the beginnings of our career, in my case, that's some 30-something years ago, actually more, we all grew up using data. But let's talk about what it means today because of digital channels, because of the ability to capture and store data, we have way more opportunities. So the way we look at it is three pieces. Piece one is how does data impact insight? So what we have available today is way more actual sales data, actual behavior data, actual what did I just do 10 minutes ago data. Now that problem is that it's all about what did I do 10 minutes ago or even a second ago. The trick is how do I take that, turn it into insight, which might in fact inform me about what I do 10 minutes from now. And that's the trick. What's happened is this, there's this notion somehow that because I have all this data, what we call big data, that I can get you to do all these things that you don't necessarily want you to do, but I can retarget you, and I can retarget the retarget, and I can pinpoint you in ways that nobody else has ever been able to do. Ergo, you're going to buy way more. Now, it's a great thought. Right? And we know that, that targeting definitely works, and direct marketing has been around for a long time. Lester Wonderman, of, who created the Wonderman Agency, set this up 70 years ago. So he, he was already into that and using that kind of data. What I find really interesting is that if, if you know what the single biggest factor Christmas time was in moving shoppers to buyers online was free shipping had nothing to do with all the data in the world, all the retargeting, everything I know about you, so I offer you free shipping. I converted way more than I did doing anything else. Because why well, was a great insight that I gave you free shipping, you're ready to, you're ready to buy. So in our business, the, the, the trick is how do I take that data and turn it into insight? How do I turn it into understanding you as a human being? It's not about the algorithm. It's about you as the human being. So that's number one. Number two is personalization. So data allows us to personalize in ways that we couldn't do 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even five years ago. But again, with that personalization, in and of itself, it's irrelevant unless I have step one, which is insight. Because I can personalize all I want, but if I don't really know what you want to do, if I don't really understand what motivates you, if I really don't understand what turns you on, then I'm just wasting my time. And the third piece is measurement, because what the data allows us to do is better measure our success and measure it way quicker, so that I can get in faster to change, I can test more, I can look for more opportunities, in fact, to use that insight that I have or to hone that insight better to get you, the, to, get you to a place that I think is going to be more interesting for you as a consumer, which in fact is what I need to do in order to get you to buy more. So how does that affect your work, what you guys have done? I mean, most people think, oh, you know, the big agency, do the 30-second spot and some banners. But what, what does this information allow you to do? So it allows us to better understand the consumer. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about insight, right? Because the truth of the matter is, it's how do you use that human data? See, what I like to say is it's not about big data in our world. It's about primal data. It's about you as a person. I need that primal data. I need to understand who you are and why you've done what you've done. Otherwise, all I have is a record of what you did 10 seconds ago. And so that's nice to have, but it's not in and of itself. It's not enough. So I need to take that, plus I need to know more about you. Now, Lester Wonderman always says that if consumers really knew how much of the so-called big data we have about you is completely irrelevant, they'd sleep a lot better at night. They wouldn't be so worried about, about privacy. But the truth is that there is stuff out there that we have today because we have, we have more data about your health. We have more data about when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, what you buy, where you're walking. All of this adds to a picture of you as a person that we can use to give you more information, to give you more opportunities to 
see things that maybe you wouldn't have seen otherwise, to help you do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. There's a certain serendipity here in the human, in the human experience. It's critical, right? And I think that's why we still see why retail shopping, as in walking into a store, still gives you a bigger average order than buying online because there's a serendipity to seeing things, to smelling things, to testing things. And we haven't, we haven't figured out yet how to, and we might never actually how to do that online. I think there's always going to be an interplay between actual place-based retail and digital retail, you know, uh, online retail. But I think that our ability to, our ability to take that data and really understand who you are is what makes the difference. And again, I think that the more we have an understanding, the better off we are.